Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we gather in prayer this evening on this, the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, let us call to mind the mercy of God as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to encounter Christ. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and the Son of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children, by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the 
book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the Lord. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without pay and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy. Feed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you shall run, shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. So there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three of them are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. The word of the Lord. Amen. This weekend, as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord, one of the questions we can ask ourselves is, what does baptism mean to me? What does baptism mean to me? And as we ask ourselves that question, the answers that arise in our minds and our hearts are probably the things that we have learned throughout our faith journey that baptism washes away original sin. It gives us a particular relationship with Jesus Christ as we are, in a sense, grafted into his life. 
that it is the gateway or the first sacrament that we receive in order to receive other sacraments. It makes us a member of the church. So if you ever need a baptismal certificate, you call the church you were baptized at. So baptism, there are a lot of different things we can say about baptism and what it means and a lot of different answers that we can come up with, which are all true. But as I was reflecting this week, I was uh, looking at and reading uh, Pope Benedict XVI's Jesus of Nazareth. You can get this on Amazon at your local religious store and so on. But anyway, I was looking at uh, Jesus of Nazareth and uh, one of the things is, is that Pope Benedict XVI, and I, and I love Pope Francis, and you know, he, he's kind of like the teddy bear, but uh, Pope's, uh, Pope uh, Benedict XVI, you know, his writings, a lot of great nuggets of wisdom and spiritual readings, so um, definitely give him a second look. Uh, but nonetheless, I was going through Jesus of Nazareth, and he was talking about the baptism of, of the Lord that we're celebrating today. And one of the things that he said about the baptism of the Lord is this, and I just want to share with you this brief quote. He said, The baptism is an acceptance of death for the sins of humanity, and the voice that calls out, This is my beloved Son, over the baptismal waters is an anticipatory reference to the resurrection. This also explains why, in his own discourses, Jesus uses the word baptism to refer to death. Only from this starting point can we understand Christian baptism. That Jesus' baptism anticipated his death on the cross, and the heavenly voice proclaimed in anticipation of the resurrection. These anticipations have now become reality. John's baptism with water was received its full, its full meaning through the baptism of Jesus' own life and death. And to accept the invitation to be baptized now means to go to the place of Jesus' baptism. It is to go where he identifies himself with us and to receive there our identification with him. The point where he anticipates death has now become the point where we anticipate, anticipate rising again with him. So true to what I said about us being grafted onto the life or into the life of Christ, that baptism really makes us one with the Lord in a new relationship. But one of the things that uh, Pope Benedict XVI really underscores, and one of the things that maybe we're called to look at with fresh eyes this time around as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord, is that everything and most everything that we hear about baptism, especially as it, as it pertains to Jesus, is speaking not simply of this pivotal moment where we uh, transition from celebrating Christmas and now into the public ministry of Jesus, where we seem to fast forward like 30 some years, and we go from baby Jesus to like 30 year old Jesus and in public ministry but and it's not just about you know washing away original sin or that Jesus was baptized but rather it speaks to in baptism the resurrection and the cross and so there's broader more far-reaching implications that we're called to examine when we encounter Jesus being baptized you know so for example uh, one of the things that was that that said is that that in, in scripture that you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased now for the for the voice from heaven to say this it's not just simply saying that Jesus is the one among many the one kicked out of the lineup the one among, among many prophets etc but in saying this, it is acknowledging that Jesus is the one who is coming to his baptism and is accepting the will of the Father, and in doing so, also accepting the implications of the cross and the resurrection. 
that is accepting death, accepting the cross and the resurrection. And so as it's acknowledging that, um, we too, and it's also seen and bears itself out in scripture as well. Because baptism also is, as Pope Benedict XVI said, that it also equates to death and resurrection because when disciples want to sit on Jesus' right and left, you know, he says, can you drink from the cup I drink from? Can you be baptized or are you baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And so one of the things that we hear is that um, again, that it is about the cross and the resurrection that's pointing to eternal life. It's pointing beyond and in addition to all the things I said about baptism just a few uh, moments ago. And also we hear this in scripture too, um, and I think in a very beautiful way, although we don't necessarily hear the connections this weekend, but um, when the, the sky is torn open, you know, sometimes they just, Scripture just says says the clouds or sky were open. And it seems, I don't know, peaceful, like we're opening a door, kind of casual. But the actual original Greek is, uh, I believe it's pronounced schizo. Again, don't call a bishop about me mispronouncing Greek words, and it's Greek to me, okay? But um, that said... Um, it means like a duality or multiple personalities. It's where we get schizophrenia from. But in many ways it speaks to the heart of who Jesus is in a way because um, Jesus is fully human and fully divine. But also as the skies are torn open, we also then think about and the voice proclaims who Jesus is. We fast forward to the crucifixion and the veil in the temple is what? Torn in two, torn apart. And the, the centurion says, truly this was the Son of God. So again, everything we hear in baptism, it is a connection or a pointer to the cross and the resurrection. And it is in baptism that as Jesus is baptized, and one of the reasons why he's baptized it's not because he needed to be, because he didn't sin. But then when Jesus is baptized, he takes that, the, the death that you and I, that we suffer upon himself. And he's going to take that to the cross. So he takes that upon himself. And so when we approach or when we are baptized, because I know that the majority of us were baptized as young children, so we don't have any... Um, any memory or, or recollection beyond pictures, but when we think about what it means to be baptized, then we are taking on, or we are being united with Christ who brings us salvation, who has conquered death, who has conquered the cross, conquered death, and gives us eternal life. And so, as we think about that in terms of baptism, um, you know, one of the things that we're called then to think about, too, is just then how are we um, approaching baptism in our day-to-day -day life? How are we approach? what are we called to do in these moments um, in light of that as we're called to enter in to that same process as we're, um, you know, as Jesus' life, death, resurrection, cross, resurrection, as we're called to enter into that cyclical pattern of God's sacrificial love, because we do this day in and day out, right? Like sometimes we have to make small and big sacrifices. We have to die to ourselves, but we rise to new life. That's part of our union with Christ and union with Christ through baptism. The cyclical pattern keeps repeating itself, but always, always, always brings us to new life. As the letter St. John said this weekend, that the victory is found in our faith. Victory is found in our faith. And so again, what we think about, like, well, what can we do or what's the response? And, and I think it comes in a certain sense from the, 
way in which the Gospel of Mark is written. Uh, and let me explain. So, one of the, a friend of mine, or and she used to be in a youth group um, when I was at St. Charles at my first assignment, and she's now a registered dietitian and has her own business and is uh, continually putting out information on Instagram and social media about you know nutrition, diets, etc. And one of the things she's talking about was continuing to build healthy habits because according to the research that she was consulting, that's usually around January 19th where we start to really waver in our New Year's resolutions and commitments, maybe in particular to diet, but I'm sure in other areas too. But if you're like me and start your New, Res New Year's resolutions this past Monday, you got a few days, okay? <laughs> But, but in this moment, you know, it's, it, it is, we're in that midpoint to where we could slough off on our resolutions and start to let our spiritual commitments or spiritual uh, resolutions um, fade away or not be faithful to them. And so, in a certain sense, this connection to the cross that leads us to eternal life, we need to treat like Mark treats the gospel. And what I mean by that is this, that over and over thematically, if you read uh, the gospel of Mark from start to finish, he often interjects the sense of urgency. That he'll say immediately, then Jesus da 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 da, you know, fill in the blank. So Jesus was baptized immediately, the clouds, everything was torn open, the voice came from heaven. And then immediately Jesus is going to go into the desert. So there's a certain sense of, of urgency, of immediacy, that, G, that Mark treats the gospel, the good news, with as he writes. And for you and me, that is also what we have to do, is to treat our faith, treat our relationship with the Lord, treat the gift of our baptism that leads us to eternal life with that same sense of immediacy. And not to let up not to let up, to not let things that we said, oh yeah, I'll get to that another day, treat that with immediate attention. Or whatever we're struggling with and wherever we need to pray more about or bring to the Lord or whatever our resolutions are in our, in our spiritual lives this year, to treat that with that same sense of urgency. Because what baptism means to should mean to us, among again the many things I mentioned at, at the beginning of this homily, is that what it means to us is new life. It's life to us. It's our identity. It's who we are in Christ. And so to treat that with, with any regard other than urgency or immediate immediacy or trying to, uh, with that same sense of importance, kind of leaves us out. That we're not living as closely with the Lord as we could be. That our life may not be as full as it could be. That we're not conquering sin or conquering those temptations or those, those things that might be holding us back that we're, if, we, if we're not dying to self and rising to new life. But if we treat the grace of our baptism, if we treat the fact that it's leading to the cross, the resurrection, to new life, with that same sense of urgency, and we experience the new life that Christ desires for us, we experience the salvation the Lord wishes to give to us and the journey, the journey that began when he was baptized in the feast that we celebrate here today.
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Trusting in the Lord, we present to him our prayers of intercession. Our response is here, Lord, hear our prayer. That all the baptized live in justice and unity, faithful to the gospel call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Governors and legislatures work for just laws and end discrimination due to race, nationality, or economic class. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people who have strayed from God's path find in Jesus a friend who comforts and guides them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Tim Hugelin, May he enjoy the blessing of God's light and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That members of this faith community live up to their baptismal promises. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And that we may intercede for one another as we mention our many needs and intentions in the silence of our hearts. pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Nicholas Ludwig, that he may enjoy the blessing, blessing of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, in your grace and mercy, we ask you to hear these prayers and grant them according to your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into a sacrifice of Him. 
who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Giving thanks to you, call us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to each other a sight of peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but the only saved word of my soul shall be healed.
pray? Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Those taking the Eucharist to home bomb, please come forward. Sherry's take the gift of Christ as the assurance of our prayers, our love, and our support. I have one uh, brief announcement before we conclude this evening. Um, it has come to my attention that uh, many of you may not have received your offertory envelopes. Um, we have checked into it. It's not a company problem. It's not a Help a Christian's problem. It's a part of the ongoing problems we've been having with the uh, mail delivery in our area. So that's where the hang-up is. So if you've not received your offertory envelopes, um, you can certainly put your offertory contributions in a regular envelope, put your name on it and date it, and throw it in the appropriate collection basket. Also, I remind everyone there are online giving options that are on our website, so uh, feel free to check those out as well. But that's what's going on with the envelopes, and hopefully they'll hit your home soon. I know that we also sent out a Christmas card on behalf of the parish council. It's hit some household and pops holes and not others, so again, uh, just some of the ongoing problems we've been having, but that's what's going on, so just want to let y'all know. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen.